uh, to get an inside look at the Liberal caucus. Wayne Easter, a Liberal MP. Mr. Easter, thank you so much for taking time. I know it's a busy day. We appreciate you getting to our studios, though. My, my pleasure. Okay, so you have read this letter, no doubt. You're part of the Liberal caucus, of course, longtime member. What do you make of the letter? <laughs> uh, not a heck of a lot. Uh, it's, uh, it's much too late. Uh, we've already trust, uh, lost trust. Uh, there's nothing in the letter that states, I have full confidence in the leadership of the Prime Minister, uh, which the letter would have to state for me, uh, and apologize uh, for how she's undermined the Liberal mandate completely over what really, uh, what she admitted herself, there was nothing illegal done here. All that was requested was a second opinion. What's going to happen at this caucus meeting tonight, Mr. Easter? Well, that'll be up for the uh, caucus uh, to decide. Uh, I have made my position very clear. Uh, the, the, uh, the tape was the, the very last straw. I mean, it's completely unacceptable for a privy councillor, a minister, uh, the highest position in the land, to actually tape a conversation with the clerk of the privy council. That it only doesn't mean bad relations in terms of uh, our caucus and the taping that, uh, that makes people feel suspicious, but it also, look, I talk to people at fisheries and they may say, well, look, I, I think I can do that, Wayne. And then something happens, they can't do it. If I had taped the conversation and released it later, they would look bad. You just can't do that. It, re it ruins relations between the political side of government and the bureaucratic side. Can you, be, can, can you ever be trusted again? Do you think caucus tonight will vote to expel Jody Wilson-Raybould? Well, uh, I, I certainly uh, think they, they will. Uh, my, my belief is that uh, she certainly uh, should be gone. Um, the, you know, uh, the, the scenario that's been played out here, look, uh, and there's a lot of uh, misinformation and uh, exaggerated information out there. The fact of the matter is that with a remediation agreement, uh, it is another tool in the legal toolbox where you, given certain scenarios, you can protect the jobs or the economy in your country. It's a tool that has to be looked at, and that is what should have been looked at in this instance, and she seems to have been unwilling to do it. The Prime Minister has a responsibility for all decisions that are made for the economy as a whole, be it in Alberta jobs, be it in Windsor jobs in the car companies, or be it jobs in Quebec and the rest of the country with this major construction company. He has a responsibility to look at every scenario that's possible to save, maintain, and expand those jobs. And this is just another tool in the toolbox. It's not asking for any laws to be broken. What about Jane Philpott? Well, I think, uh, and I've said this publicly, I think uh, Jane Philpott is a, is a different uh, situation somewhat. I mean, I have felt uh, used uh, by the former Attorney General in terms of how she handled this. I was willing in the beginning to give uh, her the benefit of the doubt. Maybe uh, Ms. Philpott is in the same position. I don't know whether Jane Philpott knew uh, of all these, uh, all these other things that were going on in terms of... a a tape with uh, the clerk of the Privy Council, which to me in that tape, when you listen to it closely, it sounds like it's leading. It sounds like it's scripted. Uh, and uh, that even makes it worse. There's something else too, and I mean- So I don't been... know what Jane Philpott. Yeah, we'll see how it plays out. You have been in politics for you know 25 plus years now. You served in a number of ministerial positions in the Chrétien government. And what this letter from Jody Wilson-Raybould seems to be saying, Mr. Easter, is, you know, I, I am about principle over politics. I'm not interested in getting involved in sort of the grubby old ways of doing politics and corporate lobbying and, and you know, helping friends and, and where, you know, I, I'm more interested in getting reelected than doing what is right. Your question uh, that you would have for, for Jody Wilson-Raybould, because it seems to me that there is, of course, uh, an election coming up in October, and, and it's one thing to be standing on principle, but of course there are also politics involved. And so it, it's kind of hard to square those two together. 
Well, what principle are you standing on when you're the highest political office in the land and you take a, you, you tape a conversation with the clerk of the Privy Council? What principle applies there? This is not about one person. The thing about partisan politics uh, and party politics and being in government is you have to operate as a team. Look, I've been in cabinet and uh, I've been in some very serious sh shouting matches in cabinet, angry shouting matches where I've lost the fight. But I had the fight at the cabinet table and you leave the room, okay, I put my best foot forward in terms of this argument. I lost uh, that fight, but I'm still a member of the team. You know, eight out of 10 times you may agree with the team, two out of 10 times you may not but it's for the greater good of your governance as the country, and that's what you have to do as a team as a team player. And the bottom line in this particular instance, as I've said a couple of times now, is there was nothing illegal done here. This is another tool in the toolbox uh, of which you can punish a company for wrongdoing uh, while still maintaining those innocent workers who work for that company uh, their pensions, investments that may be made into that uh, pension, you still secure them and see the guan. You arrest the executives, as has been in the done in this case, you fine them, you penalize them, you throw some of them in jail, and you may even penalize the company. But that's another tool in the legal toolbox. Away in Easter, long And it long wasn't time. looked at, or it didn't seem to be looked at. Great to have you on, Mr. Easter. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Bye-bye.